Good day students, today we are going to talk about what is a moral agent. A moral agent is a person who has the ability to discern right from wrong and to be held accountable for his or her own actions. Now please take note of this uh, definition. Moral agents have a moral responsibility not to cause unjustified harm. Ibig sabihin, yung mga bata or yung mga matatanda with mental disabilities may have little or wala silang kapasidad to be moral agents because the children cannot really discern what is right from wrong. They cannot really distinguish what is good from bad, lalo na sa mga complex na mga activities. Even the adults with mental disabilities, once a person has a mental disability, masasabi natin na hindi niya kayang mag-isip ng tama basta gawin lang niya ang gusto niyang gawin. Aside of course, pag meron tayong tinatawag na lucid interval. Now, adults with full mental capacity also may relinquish their moral agency only in extreme situation. Like for example, pag na-hostage ka or meron tayong tinatawag na uh, kapalit, no? pag naiipit yung tao sa isang sitwasyon, maaari niyang gawin yung mali kasi merong nag-uudyok sa kanya dahil may kapalit. Meron tayong tinatawag na or else, like or else I'll kill you or else I will get your belongings. Ganon. So, with those situations, nawawalan tayo ng tinatawag na moral agency. And so, when we discuss moral agents or moral agency, we have of course the moral subjects which includes the human, the animals, the art, and the environment. Now with these moral subjects, we have now the moral community which includes all people from birth to death. Theoretically, every person in the moral community has equal natural rights to moral protection. However, it does not mean that a moral community of people is a community who act morally or ethically. This could be a meaning, but it is not the meaning used in here. Now, in ethics, one's moral community consists of all those beings that one holds in moral regard. Example nito is that those beings that you need to think before you do something, like sasabihin mo sa isipan mo na, is this right to do this before you do something that could affect the being or that could affect them. Now, according to philosopher Danny Elliott, all members of the moral community are subjects of moral worth. Pag sinasabi natin moral worth, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina na pag-iisipan mo munang mabuti kung ang gagawin mo ay makaka-apekto ba doon sa mga moral subjects. Ano yung mga moral subjects ulit natin? The human, animals, art, and then the environment. Pero, not all the moral subjects are part of the moral community. Hindi porket may moral worth ang mga moral subjects na ito, hindi sila parte ng moral community. Why? Sinabi natin kanina na pag moral community, this includes all people from birth to death. And pag sinasabi natin moral people, these are the moral agents who has the ability to know what is right from wrong. Do animals know what is right from wrong? Does the art know what is right from wrong? Or does the environment know what is right from wrong? Example, animals, art, cultural artifacts, and the environment are not members of the moral community. However, they should be protected from unjustified harm. Ito yung tinatawag natin na moral worth. They have moral worth but they are not part of the moral community. So ngayon, if there was a fire in an art museum, firefighters should save the people before saving artwork. Even though art is a subject of moral worth, saving artwork is not as important as saving human life. So anong uunahin natin yung mas may malaking halaga? The person or the artwork? Though they have uh, moral worth, but which is more worth it? Now, so while moral protection is given to all subjects of moral worth, the rights of members of the moral community are the most important.
Now, according to Aristotle, never intentionally cause unjustified harm. Moral obligation of moral agents is to use their power with care and never intentionally cause unjustified harm. Because if you intentionally cause unjustified harm, you are not a moral agent. Now we have the man as the fully functioning person. According to Carl Rogers, a fully functioning person is one who is in touch with his or her deepest and innermost feelings and desires. He also believed that a fully functioning person is an individual who is continually working toward becoming self-actualized. Now, let us not forget Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And in that hierarchy of needs, the highest form is that of self-actualization. Now, the individual has received unconditional positive regard from others. Ibig sabihin, ang ganda na ng feedback sa kanya does not place conditions on his or her worth and is capable of expressing feelings and is fully open to life's main experiences. We will now discuss the characteristics of the fully functioning person in order for us to know what really is a functioning person. Number one, we have here open to experience. Both positive and negative emotions are accepted. Ibig sabihin, open na siya sa sarili niya. Negative feelings are not denied. So, in short, pwede sigurong that person will take at it as a constructive criticism. It is worked through. The negative feelings is worked through rather than resorting to ego defense mechanism. Hindi na siya yung pag sinabihan mong ganito, for example, Mali yung ginawa mo, hindi na siya yung sasabihin na, o bakit? Ano bang tama? Sige nga, gawin mo nga kung kaya mo. It's not like that. Open na siya sa experience, like gagawin niyang positive criticisms lahat. That is the first characteristic of the fully functioning person. The next one is existential living. He is in touch with different experiences as they occur in life. Avoid prejudice and preconceptions. And that person is being able to live and fully appreciate the present. Hindi yung he is always looking at the past. Dapat ganito kasi kasi ganito ang nangyari sa past. So dapat ganito din ang gawin natin. Or he does not look really forward to the future. Or in any sense, that person looks to the future but not always. In other words, the person is living for the moment. That is existential living. What is now? The next one is trust feelings. A fully functioning person trusts feelings, instincts, and gut reactions. These are paid attention to and trusted. People's own decisions are the right ones and we should trust ourselves to make the right choices. Hindi yung Dapat ganito kasi ang dami nating pagbabasehan. Now, we have our own instincts, no? lalo na pag nahihirapan tayong mag -decision. We should trust our feelings because that is what we call going towards self-actualization. We already know our strength. We already know our weaknesses. Pag alam natin ang ating kagalingan at ang ating kahinaan, we would now know what to do, what choices to make. And that is to trust our instincts. no? Creativity. Creative thinking and risk-taking are features of a person's life. A person does not play safe all the time. This involves the ability to adjust and change and seek new experiences. And lastly, fulfilled life. A person is happy and satisfied with life and always looking for new challenges and experiences. In short, contento na siya kung ano man ang gusto niyang gawin. He or she could do it because, ayun na nga, open to experience na siya, may existential living na, uh, that person trusts his feelings, and meron siyang tinatawag nating creative thinking, and that person is a risk taker. Again, we go back to a moral agent. Moral agents, again, are those agents expected to meet the demands of morality. However, not all agents are moral agents. Remember, young children and animals are capable of performing actions. They can be called agents because they can do actions. No, However, 
they are not automatically considered moral agents. For example, they are not capable of conforming to at least some of the demands of morality. They are children. They don't really know what is right from wrong. Moral agent, sinabi natin kanina, is a person who has the ability to discern right from wrong. And that person should be held accountable for his or her own actions. Now, if may ginawa yung bata na mali, though he or she is held accountable, does she or he really know to discern what is right from wrong? Kung bakit niya ginawa yun? That is not. They can have a moral responsibility also not to cause unjustified harm. Ito yung ginatawag natin na moral agent. Agents can obey moral laws such as murder is wrong or stealing is wrong, then they are moral agents if even if they respond only to prudential reasons such as fear of punishment and even if they are incapable of acting for the sake of moral considerations. Now, according to Emmanuel Kant, it is also essential that the agents should have the capacity to rise above their feelings and passion and act for the sake of the moral law. There are also claims that a true agent can perform the relevant act out of altruistic impulses. Other suggested conditions of moral agency are that agents should have an enduring self with free will. Now, please remember this one. Free will and an inner life with an understanding of the relevant facts as well as moral understanding. With this one, we go to virtue. What is a virtue? A virtue is a trait or a quality that is deemed to be morally good and thus is valued as a foundation of principle and good moral being. And theoretically, virtue is doing what is right and avoiding what is wrong. Personal virtues are characteristics valued as promoting collective and individual greatness. The opposite, of course, of virtue is Vice. Now, what is vice? A vice is a practice or behavior or habit generally considered immoral, sinful, criminal, rude, taboo, depraved, or degrading in the associated society. The question is, are all vices bad or considered immoral? Bisho, yung tinatawag natin na bisho. Siyempre, ba, bisho yung paninigarilyo? Bisho siguro yung pambababae. Bisho yung, uh, what do you call this one? Uh, paginom ng ala. However, what if this habit or a practice of collecting plants, no? Is this uh, an immoral uh, activity? Is this rude? Is this a taboo? Diba? So, that is the question to be answered. Sasagutin nyo yan. Anyways, with virtue and vice, we have called virtue ethics. Virtue ethics is philosophy developed by Aristotle and other ancient Greeks. It is the quest to understand and live a life of moral character, and this character-based approach to morality assumes that we acquire virtue through practice. Now, by practicing being honest, brave, just, generous, and all other positive aspects, a person develops an honorable and moral character. Pag ginagawa natin to, pag ginagawa natin tong habit, yung pagsasabi ng totoo, pagiging mapagbigay, or being brave. Now, according to Aristotle, by honing virtuous habits, people will likely make the right choice when faced with ethical challenges. So, habitual na natin ginagawa itong uh, magagandang bagay na to. Virtue as a habit, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina. According to Aristotle, our habits and that the good life is a life of mindless routine. So, pag palagi natin itong ginagawa, good, good conduct arises from habits, which in turn now magiging... Uh, parte na to ng pamumuhay natin, this will already be embedded in our system because when you always do things, for example, ang routine mo every morning, pagkagising mo, diretso maghilamos agad, syempre, for the first, for example, first months, medyo awkward pang ginagawa yan. But if you practice it almost every day or every day, 
magiging habit na yan, does good conduct arises. Parang may embed na sa'yo na pagkagising at pagkagising mo, maghihilamos ka agad. And that is uh, one of the example uh, based on Aristotle's description to virtue as a habit. Developing virtue as a habit, ito, sinasabi natin kanina, Aristotle believed that virtue as a habit requires an intentional choice when you begin. Siyempre, we want changes. For example, dapat uh, lahat ng mga activities natin, sinasagutan natin ng maaga, hindi yung aabutin natin sa, iaabot natin sa deadline before natin sasagutan. Eh, magkrakram tayo, no? Over time, one becomes used to behaving virtuously. When we say behaving virtuously, going back to the example, pag uh, meron tayong deadline, tapos nauna nang naibigay yung ating uh, activity, magiging uh, sanay na tayo pag ginagawa natin, eto ng paulit-ulit, pag binigay yung activity, sagutan agad, hindi yung aabutin ang deadline. Now, if we do it to all of our activities, the future activities, then magiging habit na siya. That's how we develop virtue. As a habit, you have become virtuous. It's now part of you and how you act. Thank you for listening.